there. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about social psychology, everything that we do is is social. Mm -hmm. Whether it's like pro-social or anti-social, there's some drive mm -hmm. about being involved with other people, whether that's helping people or, or hurting mm -hmm. people. And if we don't conform, then there's a very real risk that we'll be rejected and shut out of that group or excluded in some way, and that hurts, right? Physically, socially, psychologically, to be rejected by the people that, you know, you're trying to signal that you want mm -hmm. to be part of their group, and then for any of these signals, they can be, I think, seen as, like, social signals that mm -hmm. you're trying to, you know, conform yeah. and be like them. It's two sides of a coin, right? So let's say you post a photo of, your outfit or what you did over the weekend and then 20 of your friends like it so liking or thumbs up or heart or whatever is like it's the most blatant form of validation right like it's very <laughs> obvious um you feel good or you feel recognized or validated if people are saying oh you look great or that looks so fun your life is so interesting right like. the absence of a like or any comments or anything like that is I think the other side of that coin is it's taken by people as as rejection and some people get will get like notifications on their phone right about I have a like or someone commented and then some people will then take that as like oh I need to go see who commented or who liked and people do keep track actually of you know mm -hmm. how much attention and how many followers and stuff like that they're getting so uh, it seems to be where do you work? A really easy way to get feedback about like how well you're doing in that world, mm -hmm. right? So if you get a lot of likes and comments, then you would think, okay, well maybe I was just posting a picture of like an attractive outfit or like a nature scene or a dog, and a lot of people like that. So if I keep doing that, that's the way to get positive attention. And then if you've posted something that didn't get any attention or likes, then probably you're less likely to keep doing stuff like that. Like you're, to the degree that you're pushed and motivated by the validation, then you would follow mm -hmm. what your followers want to see, right? Mm -hmm. like withdrawal, right? So let's say you're very keyed in to your social media accounts and like you become dependent on that attention, validation, connection. Let's say you go somewhere traveling, for example, where you don't have access to 24-7 data and internet you're in some situation where you can't connect, right? Then people who are dependent on it, just like any anything you can be dependent on, you know, drugs or whatever, you would develop like, this kind of withdrawal Sorry, and it would bother you. Mm -hmm. um, no, you can go. No, you first. No, I don't want to rant. No, stop ranting. No, you can go. Um, I do believe there is conformity because I believe people have social expectations and believe that there is a way to present themselves and then they become this persona that they are online and they're not usually that person in real life where they're trying to compensate for something that they don't have in their lives so I feel as this social media has caused everybody to believe uh, that they're a certain person or they want to be a certain individual which they can't always live up to or they're attempting to be all these people that they're not and they think they're being individual but they're just getting what they're being fed and becoming that persona instead of trying to become themselves and become more than they are. What do you we have nothing that's going for us today, which is sad, which is why there's no one trend, there's no one thing. In the 60s, there was something universal to define the 60s. and the 80s, there was something universal to define the 80s. And because we have so much information, we're not we're not um, defining ourselves and we're not fighting for anything yeah. and they have, they're have they all trying to find an identity, identity through the internet instead of creating their own communities and their own spaces. Yeah. In New York, I think it's easier than a lot of places in, the, mm -hmm. in America especially to find a tribe, I call it like a tribe or like a little culture mm -hmm. and a little community that like kind of speaks to you mm -hmm. but even then people arrive here especially like being here in university and they feel as though that they have to kind of belong to a certain place so then they start changing themselves mm -hmm. based on what they see or what they want to be which is fine because like you want to be a certain person so even then um, people tend to follow and not be the, their individual selves okay. um, 
because they just see what is around them and they pick what they like and they copy that. Mm -hmm. So there's still a copying trend even here in Europe. So I think people should be more consciously aware of it. I think once you like if you're aware of it, you understand more about the whole conformity thing. Which I think a lot of people should question what they're doing. Yeah. I had an idea of what it would be like here, and then it was exactly as I was saying. It was a whole bunch of people copying instead of being themselves. Mm -hmm. So people trying to create spaces, people trying to create communities, people just doing things excessively instead of trying to develop who they are, especially in an art school, trying to develop themselves as an artist instead of trying to copy everything else everybody else is doing. But it seems to be that it really just shows like a very biased slice of people's lives because no one posts about, or it's not common for people to post negative. So what social media seems to promote is it's all about positivity, so it's about conforming, but conforming in a very specific way about like, isn't everything amazing all of the time? And like life is made up of a set of beautiful,